Welcome to the Daily Devotionals podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Good afternoon, Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our epistle reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. The epistle reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is the epistle of James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, in verses 14 through 18. James chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and 14 through 18. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith? and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But... If you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. As we hear James speak this last part, it it would maybe perk our ears and say, wait a minute, I thought we were saved by grace through faith, not by works. I thought that's what Ephesians said, not by works so that no one can boast. Well, James isn't saying that we're saved by works. James is saying that there needs to be evidence that faith is living, that faith is real, that faith is genuine and sincere, and there needs to be evidence. There's an old saying, if someone accused you of being a Christian, Where would there be enough evidence to convict you? And so we're looking for evidence. You know, one of the things I enjoy on television every once in a while, I like watching the People's Court when I can, or Judge Judy maybe, and um, and sometimes both of those judges can be a little bit coarse. But uh, the point is that both of them point to the fact that there needs to be evidence for the accusation needs to be evidence to make their case. And so when it comes to us as well, is there evidence that our faith is alive? And the evidence happens to be good works. Good works in not showing partiality. Good works in welcoming everyone. Good works in trying to help people trying to meet physical need, trying to meet spiritual need, trying to show love and compassion, trying to do the little things. And that's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be something grand and magnificent and tremendous. 
It just needs to be little things, little acts of kindness, little shows of Christian love, little displays of the message of Jesus. And so when we have that opportunity, we can take full advantage of it. You know, James is reminding us of, of what we ought to know. Faith can't just be in words. It has to be also in actions. And so genuine faith will show itself by what we do, by what we say, by the way we live our faith out in front of others. That's genuine and sincere faith. That's faith that is truly alive. Jesus showed us his love, his mercy in action, his perfect life without sin, his willingness to suffer without retribution back to those causing it, his willingness to, to die in our place. All of that he did. And may we take up our crosses daily and follow him. Maybe suffering various things because of our faith, but knowing that we have been forgiven, we have been given the gift of life, we have been shown grace and mercy, we have been given the ultimate kindness. And if we truly have faith, then aren't we to reflect that kindness, that love, that mercy, that grace? May we do that very thing. May our faith in Christ be absolutely living for all to see, without doubt. If we're accused of being a Christian, may there be overwhelming evidence to convict us. Jesus lived and died for us. May we live for him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit that our faith may be alive, showing itself in not just the words we speak, but also in the actions that we take, the works we do to glorify you. Strengthen us in our faith that we might shine it and share it and show it to give honor and glory for the one who gave himself for us. In his name. Amen. Have a blessed Thursday and a blessed weekend. Um, we will see you again on Tuesday of next week as I have uh, a meeting I have to attend. So we will have uh, devotion again on Tuesday. However, you can join us for streaming our service uh, on Sunday morning at 9.15. Have a blessed and beautiful weekend in the Lord. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.